Hello and welcome. This week we're going over lessons 13 through 16. I'm not sure if y'all realize it, but we are out of the review lessons. We actually ended the review lessons with the lesson 12 of last week. So this week it's all brand new. For those of you who are new to Right Start and you feel that your children haven't truly grasped the concepts that were taught in the review lessons, don't stress. You're gonna have plenty of time to review and go over those because that's what's gonna be in the warm ups in these following lessons. Plus, you have that fifth day. You can use that day to reinforce those areas where your child is weaker. So, let's look and see what materials we need this week. You'll need to get your math card game book, the place value cards, the abacus, the calendar month showing September, your tiles the worksheets, some glue and scissors, and yellow as a sun is optional. It's not something that you'll find in your materials, but it's colorful and the kids enjoy it. Let's get started with lesson 13. Look at your objectives. We're going to practice adding one to a number, and then they're going to understand that repeatedly adding one results in counting. That's really what counting is. It's just adding one to the number. In the materials for the math card game book, the game is N43. I have to show you before I forget. I went out and I bought the tabs that I said I was going to do and went ahead and labeled it. If you see, I put the N to remind me it's a number sense. Like here I did P to remind me that's multiplication. Now all these you don't necessarily need for level B, but having it divided like this, and especially if you have older children that you're going to be using right to start with, it's just nice to have it labeled so it's just easy to open up to. This little one over here is for the game that will be played this week. For the game today, you need the place value cards and you need the numbers one through 99, but that's for each player who's playing. So if you have more than one player playing and you only have one set of cards, you're gonna to have to flip to the back of your math card game book. In the appendices, page nine, if you notice it says place value cards, two sets. So you just make as many copies as you need for whoever's playing, you'll have to cut this out. So this will be good to do ahead of time. So you're not the day of, hey, we're gonna play this game. And then you realize, oh, I have to go and cut out all these cards. Normally we do the games at the end of the lesson, but notice we're doing the game early on in the lesson. The game is going to help children compose numbers from one up to a hundred. And then the next game they'll play is the same, only they're gonna be adding one to the number. For example, I'm just gonna pull these out. These are on the top. I have a 610, I have a four. I asked the child, can you find 610 four? or 64, and they do. Well, what's one more? Then they have to go in and find what one more would be, which is 610, five, and then they build it. In the lesson, they do have suggested numbers that they ask, but feel free to ask whichever ones you wanna ask also. On the second page where they're repeatedly adding one on the abacus, they're going to start off with 10. Then they're going to add one more and we're going to call it 10 1. 10 2. 10 3 and so forth up to four tens. So when it's finished, it will look like this. Then it asks you to go back and do it again, but use regular names. This is where if your child is a little confused between the math way of saying the names and the regular names, feel free to stick with just the math way of saying the names until they get comfortable and more confident with it. Then you can go back and start calling it by their regular names also. I want you to notice in the in conclusion, these are things you could do at the end of the lesson, or you can save it and do it at some random time throughout the day, just to reinforce what they're learning. Also, because math isn't just working during a subject, we do math all the time. So to get more comfortable with these concepts, sometimes it's nice to do it at other times outside of 
that specific time for math. Notice the last question. I love it because I never really thought about how you are adding a number on to a previous number. That's what counting is. So I like that right start is showing that things that I would not have thought about. You may have thought about it. If so, that's awesome. But if you haven't thought about it, wow, isn't that cool? On to lesson 14. This is going to be over evens and odds. And make note that lessons 14 through 16 are all focused on evens and odds. So this isn't something your child has to have mastered in this lesson. There's going to be additional lessons that they'll be practicing this on. In the warm up, it's talking about the days of the week and it's asking in the materials for you to provide a calendar of the full month. If your children know the days of the week, fine, you don't have to go over it, but what, what you're going to start doing is having them point out what day it is today. And then maybe they can, you know, if you have stickers, you could put a star on that day or make it fun, or maybe they could cross out the previous days. Lots of options on how you want to use your calendar. I think the lessons on the even and odds using the tiles is pretty self-explanatory. I don't feel the need that I need to pull them out and show you. I think the pictures do a great job of doing that. There is an explanation next to the evens that gives you additional insight as the teacher. I also want to refer back to the general thoughts on mathematics and read to you number 21. Some pairs of concepts are easier to remember if one of them is thought of as dominant. Then the non-dominant concept is simply the other one. For example, if even is dominant over odd, an odd number is one that is not even. This will be explored more in these lessons. And we start off with teaching the children even numbers. And they get comfortable with even numbers. So when you go to odd numbers, it kind of makes sense. If it's not even, it's going to be odd. In this lesson, they are going to be doing worksheet five. On the second page at the bottom where it's talking about worksheet five, it's asking the child to cut out the dark lines. The heavy lines is really what it says. Here's the worksheet. Some children may struggle a little bit with the heavy line part of it and end up cutting it all up. Well, we don't want them to do that. So you know your child. You may want to go ahead and highlight the heavy lines. So just take a highlighter and highlight it for them. Now in highlighting, I realize down here, these lines aren't bold and we want them to cut that. So it might be good to go over it with a highlighter. That way they know exactly what they need to cut out. And then they're gonna take this part here they're going to glue it behind this part here. That's what you need the glue for. Also, they're either going to cut these out and they could add odd or even at the bottom here, or if they want, they can write it in themselves. So another option for the in conclusion at the end of the lesson is to save it for the fifth day. I mean, you could still ask it on this day or during this day, but also on that fifth day, Look at these questions and consider asking your child one of those questions on that day. Lesson 15 is all about even numbers plus two. So they're going to work on counting by twos by adding twos and also what happens when you add two to an even number. On the second side, it talks about entering numbers on the abacus on it sideways. So we've been using the abacus this way, but now it's asking you to use the abacus this way. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you do it this way or if you do it this way. What does matter is how we enter the beads on the abacus. We're gonna enter two and notice that they are side by side. We enter two more, two plus two is four, four plus two, is six. We keep going. And when we get to 10, you can easily see the two fives for 10. 
So we see this as 12 or we see it as 1102. Putting beads on the abacus like this is going to make it easier when we get to the second side of the abacus and we learn how to trade 10 ones for a 10. Last lesson for the week, lesson 16. Odd numbers plus two. All of lesson 15 was even numbers plus two. All of 16 will be the odd numbers plus two. One of the things it's asking you to do in the warm up is to have have your child enter 34 or 3104 on the abacus. So they're going to enter their three tens, their four, and then we're going to work on adding one on the abacus. So we add one. What do we have? 3105, 3106, 3107. Notice we didn't start with number one. We started with a random number 34, and then they're going to work up to 87. Just another way to reinforce counting. They're seeing the quantity as they're saying the number. And just like in lesson 15, they'll be putting the odd numbers on the abacus and then adding two more numbers to it. But this time they're adding odd and then by twos. I'm gonna switch over to show you something because you may not understand why Right Start is having you do this this way. On the second page towards the top, there's a section on adding two with the even odd pattern. You're gonna have your child enter one. Now it just seems natural or normal that you would enter one like this. That is not what we want the children to do on this one. You wanna make sure they're gonna enter one here. And I know, it's like, why? But there is a method to the madness. If you look at their worksheet, look at one. There's a space here. One space. Now, when they're going to add two, they're going to add two side by side. And look. Just like they saw it on their worksheet. So that is why Right Start has you start the one on this wire for working with the odds. On the second page, towards the bottom, the section on determining even or odd. I want to show you how that's done on the abacus. It says to have the child enter 28. Then you're going to ask them if this number is even or odd. I don't know. Maybe your child may know that it's even. Again, if they say even, just to make sure, ask them how they know. Or to show it to you on the abacus. If your child doesn't know if it's even or odd, suggest, hey, what if you group by twos? And this is how they can do it. We don't have an odd one out, so therefore this number is even. Let's try a different number. Let's try 3109. We're going to group by twos. And it doesn't matter if it's not totally lined up under each one, but it is nice if you can. because then it's going to make it more noticeable that it's one by itself. So therefore, this number is odd. You could pick numbers. You can ask your child to pick a number. Any number between 1 and 100, they can figure out if it's even or odd on the abacus. We are done for the week. I really hope this next week goes well for you. I also would love to hear from you. If you have comments, you have questions, maybe you don't like how I'm doing something, or maybe you want me to do something differently, feel free to let me know, but please be gentle.
This is still pretty new for me too. This is how you can reach me. Debbie at rightstartmath.com. Something you can do if you haven't done already is subscribe to this channel. You could click on notifications and then you'll be notified when the next video comes up. So until next week, when we go over lessons 17 through 20, I really hope that your week goes well. Until then.